Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm DJ Sixsmith. You're watching The Sit Down. Time to talk about a brand new movie. Jennifer Reeder, Kate Arrington. Here it is, guys. Knives and Skin. How's everybody doing? Great. Hey. Super. Good to meet you. Thanks for having us. Hey. Thanks. There's a lot going on in this movie. Yeah. I checked it out <laughs> this sure. morning, and uh, yeah, I'm still kind of uh, reeling from it a little it's bit. It's real fresh. It's real fresh, yeah. <laughs> I like doing that just because I can just kind of spill it all out mm -hmm. here, and it kind of seems like this was a movie to really spill out a lot of different emotions. So yeah. mm -hmm. what was it like putting it together? What was it like to be in it? Um, so, so Knives and Skin is related to a bunch of short films I've made leading up to it, mm -hmm. you know, so I've, so a lot of the, a lot of the, a lot part of Knives and Skin I've kind of worked out in shorter films, whether it's, um, thinking about coming of age as a lifelong process or putting, you know, adults and, um, young people both who are at kind of crossroads yeah. in lives together or, um, singing and floating Yeah, lots of music going on here, mm -hmm. which is cool, yeah. Things that talk that shouldn't talk, et cetera. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and uh, so I've worked out some of that, I've worked out a lot of that stuff sort of in, in the short films and they've been um, kind of properly vetted through, you know, kind of some great film festivals. So I knew that there were some super fans mm. for, you know, so much of the stuff I just jammed into Knives and Skin and just kept kind of jamming into it. That's awesome. But it's really, it's exactly the film that I, set out to make, you know, I should say that, that it's, um, that for everything that you see, there's no um, kind of happy accidents even, it's really All intentional. pretty, yeah, it's yeah. really pretty, I mean, it's handcrafted, but like very, you know, um, very um, determined. Hmm. So, Kate, when you hear all this, what appealed to you about all of this going on? Oh, well, you know, the second I read the script, I, I mean, I, I read, there were two, I, I read an earlier version of the script, which was so wackadoo. <laughs> Like, but in such a great way where you're like, I will definitely do this. It, I could be saying yes to like the worst <laughs> movie of my life, and I'm I don't in. care. Yeah. I don't care. I want to do it either way. And then the script that we started with mm -hmm. actually was, um, it, it had been you honed it, uh, and it was like um, really fantastic. Mm -hmm. I thought and very exciting to start with. Um, just crazy shit, you know. Yeah, get to lots do. of crazy stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when do you get to do this stuff? And then you, J Jennifer also, you know, with the help of an am amazing team um, that she's assembled, uh, I think, throughout your life, mm -hmm. you know, that they create this world that is just like to be in a holding room because we didn't have trailers. Mm -hmm. You know, you're in, like uh, in a set in a teenager's bedroom, and every you're like opening the drawers. Everything is so precise and magical and fantastic. So you were really like living in, in this world whenever you were uh, on set. That's really interesting. And I like the fact that life is just really messy in this movie, just mm -hmm. like it is in real life. So you mentioned the kids and the parents. For both of you guys, what was it like unpacking that, whether it was identity, sexuality, family relationships, obviously someone's missing in town, but there's a lot more depth there. So what mm -hmm. were kind of the hardest things to unpack in this movie? For me, as the writer, it was the hardest thing was like keeping track of everybody. Yeah, literally, a lot, you know? lot of different storylines. And yeah, yeah and it, it, at one iteration of the script, there were actually more characters, if you can imagine wow. how nuts that was. Um, and so yeah, just keeping track of everybody's um, of everybody's storyline, of everybody's arc, of everyone's breakdown, um, because everyone has their kind of own individual arc and breakdown, and then you know, kind of reassembly. Uh, but then, you know, there's like couples who also, you know, kind of are, um, you know, work together through the through the film as, as sort of like one unit. And so there's, yeah, there's like a lot of people to keep track of. Uh, and then, you know, shooting it, it was also, uh, I mean, this is typical of any um, long film that you shoot it all out of order, mm -hmm. right? And, um, you know, so also shooting it, um, or every day kind of trying to, like reorient myself to where we were in the story with right. all of those people, you know, so it all kind of stayed consistent. And I'm not talking about like just continuity of like where their hair was or what their outfit was doing or, um, but um, the like emotional range because everybody has these real loop de loop kind of um, arcs. Nobody's arc is is a is a straight line nor or, nor or nor an arc really. Mm. It's like a figure eight or like a. a a hole punched in the floor in a way, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, your character, Kate, is just all over the lot. I mean, oh my it's God, like, yeah. you got a, a new friend, we'll, we'll leave it at that, that you're <laughs> hanging out with. There's a, there's a baby situation involved there. There's yeah. some blood involved. There's a, a lot of different <laughs> things. Everything you ever wanted to do as a girl, I'd say, <laughs> I get to do. <laughs> what was most fascinating about your character? Um, you know, I love, um, I love these women who kind of, 
are able to present in a way that I've never pulled off on my, in my life. Um, you know, uh, I love her sort of preciseness, um, and I love her age. You know, I love like that mm. underneath um, this polished um, exterior. That's to me a fantastic thing in a character. But you know, just all of it was uh, so. Y you know, when you're like making out with a clown, you know. <laughs> oh, okay. It's pretty freeing, right? <laughs> yeah. It's definitely exactly. different from the norm. <laughs> Even like the one scene that you have in the car with, with the mom mm -hmm. and the one guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I haven't seen a scene like that before, which oh is just, God. she's smelling him. And mm -hmm. like, so what was it like filming that scene? Well, um, I would say that like when I, when I figured out what that scene would be, like when I was mm -hmm. writing it, that felt like a real um, breakthrough, but not a stretch on some level, you know? So like that, so Carolyn Harper's mother, I mean, I just kept imagining this unspeakable um, si situation, mm -hmm. like not knowing where your child is. And that you as, um, uh, in this case, a mother would, all of your um, senses would be heightened. You know, you'd become like an animal, sort right, of like right. looking for your child, you know? And, um, and I knew that I needed to, I knew that I wanted to to make her um, sort of response to trauma like sp spill into you know some murky ethics, mm -hmm. you know, because I think that um, when when real life humans encounter something that they never have before, especially one that is um, deeply traumatic. Uh, you know, it's like your response, all bets are off in terms of the response that no one can predict what, you know, sort of like you will do. And, and, and I think that that happens in, you know, in real life. And so I wanted to, um, yeah, I wanted to, to make that scene where, where she really like is, is following her instinct, mm. so to speak. Right. So, yeah. So she's smelling this boy who we, we also know that we, when we've seen him with other women, we know that he is. Um, you know, he's also like a shady character mm -hmm. and and um, and is not, uh, <laughs> you know, like such an upstanding um, young man and just in terms of, you know, how he treats the women in his life. And, I, and it was also important that 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 kind of get gets flipped. So where he's taking advantage of people, um, the women in his in his life, the young women in his, his life, he's also being, you know, taken <laughs> advantage mm -hmm. of, you know, um, that he's experiencing this this. Um, He's experiencing a, a kind of um, violation of boundaries, right. even though it's consensual. You know, I mean, it's it's a murky mm. scene. It definitely you is. Know? Yeah, it's a little gray there in that scene. And I and I and um, you know, I just feel like there's lots of, you know, in so many films, the the characters that get the most dimension that's like that. You know, where you are really you follow a character into a scene and you can't look away, but you're also like want to cover your eyes because mm. you're not sure what will happen and cover your cover your eyes not in a way that's like because of, of a jump scare but something else like oh please don't let happen what's right. about to happen yeah, yeah. and I feel like a lot of the characters who get to own scenes like that are male characters you know so I also wanted to develop um, in this film um, a bunch of moms you know that for whom you 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 follow their characters and are just like oh oh is it happening now, right. you know? Are we going there? Are yeah. we going there? Yes. Um, and um, yeah, but in that, in that scene in particular, it's like it's, you know, I also wanted to create a scene that, um, yeah, has murky ethics, but it's also, um, you know, has the potential to be genuinely sort of sexy, mm. you know? And I know that that's like a hard, that's like a hard thing to, um, to, to, figure out and I don't know that it works for everybody I read a review yesterday that called that scene grotesque I was like hmm. grotesque that's a little bold you know <laughs> but I remember watching um, this brilliant film with Kate Blanchett um, notes on a scandal oh, yeah. where she's a she has an affair with a her, one of her students and I was so sucked into that relationship that when they break up in the film I was like Oh, but maybe they can work it out and I really in my brain was thinking like what I mean mm. he's a child so I it's so in, so there was something about that that stuck with me and that I wanted to kind of try to work out in Knives and Skin. Just that moment where you're both invested in a, in a character and you follow them into a situation that, um, you know, yeah, that has these kind of, not even kind of, but, you know, really murky ethics. Mm. I mean, honestly, your character has also yeah. pretty murky ethics too. Yeah. But I think that when, when her reveal happens, you know, it's also a moment that 
that I that is I think a a place then the the audience really bonds with you. It's both a a, a really wacky, mm -hmm. problematic reveal, but also I hope in the moment that all of a sudden the audience understands like why you have been so um, like opaque the whole mm -hmm. time. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's really the big thing from an audience standpoint is that you see these moral boundaries being broken and you want to understand the why. And especially yeah. with your character, it's like we're going throughout the movie really not understanding until much later. Yeah. So what did you yeah. learn about yourself as an actor in, in playing that type of role? Um, that's a good question. I don't, you know, uh, I think there's a, a certain vulnerability of, of some women that I perhaps have some judgment f towards in um, other aspects of my life. So it was nice to get to be on the other side of that. I mean, I think um, I think she's really a very uh, vulnerable woman and that her response to that vulnerability shows up in a very specific way in the world. Yeah. It's a little a little hard to to deal with in <laughs> in life sometimes, yeah, you know. Definitely. Yeah. How about the music? Let's talk about that. What mm -hmm. were you trying to really have come across with some of the different musical selections or just the singing of certain songs throughout? Sure. So like I said at the at the start that um those mu um people singing scenes mm -hmm. I have used a lot in the short films and I knew that they that they worked for various reasons, but the audience has responded to those in a really positive way. So I knew that I wanted to um Put those scene, put some some musical scenes in into this film. Although I would argue that it's not a musical. No, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's pretty clear. Yeah, but yeah. the songs that I chose are, uh, you know, autobiographical in a way. Those are songs that I listened to when I was a teenager. Or songs I still like to listen to, um, and I and I knew I and I chose those songs um, knowing that when they were rearranged as like lullabies mm -hmm. or kind of lamentations, eulogies, even um, that their lyrics would have a lot of um, pathos, yeah. you know, so those aren't, they weren't just, um, I wasn't just kind of randomly picking, you know, 80s pop songs that, that we could, you know, get the publishing rights to, you know, I knew that if, if we, if we slowed down, our lips are sealed and it was sung by this group of, of girls, um, it, it becomes a, like a, a really melancholic kind of battle cry. I mean, that's the first song in the film that you, that you hear sung and it, and for me, it, it it sets the tone. It sort of, it, I mean, in, in that song, those girls are really saying like, we have to stick together because no one else will, <laughs> no, no one else will support us. Mm -hmm. um, we have to fight our own battles and we have to fight them with each other because that's all we have. And that really is sort of the, what, how the film even comes full, full circle, you know? And then, um, you know, there's like little hints at, um, girls just want to have fun, you know, in the film. Right, and so right. then when that scene also finally comes, I mean, that's a song that in its original um, pop form is just like a fun party song, you know, mm -hmm. totally. I mean, it's not an, it's not a, it's not an unforgettable un, or unremarkable song, but it's not one that, that, that sort of when it comes on, you know, sort of brings people to tears, you know, right. but I think in the, in the, in that scene, in that moment with those three girls singing it, you know, even on set, that was a like the this our biggest boldest um, you know grip and electric guy was sobbing mm -hmm. on set in that scene. You I can know? understand. And he was like yeah. Jennifer was very touching, you know. <laughs> um, and so I think in those in and then for me in this in the in the feature length version or in you know Knives and Skin, um, which is a long film, uh, those those scenes are um, kind of given, give the, the singing scenes are like a little intermission, you know, that kind of can give an audience a, a moment to sort of like reorient themselves to the story and to the characters, because mm -hmm. there is a lot to keep track of. But they also are a way to suggest that in this, in the, in the brutal, super mistake making world of Knives and Skin, that there is still, you know, beauty and harmony and, and synchronicity, you know, that those, that those scenes really are about sort of humans coming together to do something really special. I can't sing at all, but I <laughs> totally appreciate the sort of like yeah. the power that music has and the power specifically that vocal music has to just um, transport, you know? I mean, that literally like this, this sort of like the vibration of the human voice is a real, um, has agency, has a real emotional agency in the world and in this film. Definitely. There's obviously a lot to talk about with this film. Kate, when people check it out, what are some of the big things you want them to think about? Um, I want them to think about uh, young people um, and old people mm -hmm. <laughs> as 
uh, just a few years down the road from young people, you know, um, and the, um, uh, to me, the, the I take away something really positive and beautiful from this movie, especially when it comes to young women. Yeah. Um, and their ability to um, support each other, to grow out of nothingness, out of barren soil, um, to create something and, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I, I find it a very moving, moving movie, especially, oh, there's one part, but, um, you know, I think it's very hopeful, and I hope, I hope people do have that experience. Yeah, and you learn a lot about yourself in the worst possible circumstances. Yeah. And you get pushed to different places or become primal in your behavior, and it could be a little shaky at first, but you kind of have to go through it. Mm -hmm. It's a part of life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. Well, guys, thanks so much. Thanks. Really nice Thank to you. meet you. Thank you. December 6th is the big day in theaters, on demand. Get it anywhere you want. For Jennifer and Kate, I'm DJ. See you next time here on The Sit Down.